Okay guys, this is gonna be a really fun video and I know many other YouTubers have made videos similar to this, but I figured that it's time I figured it's time for an Alaskan to kind of give their perspective on gun control and overall what our thoughts are and what my thoughts are being an Alaskan in gun control. Now a lot of people are like, aren't you just another American talking about gun control and what, you know, you, you just basically think like everyone else, you're a gun crazy lunatic. But actually uh, Alaska is quite different because we, unlike many other states out there, have a lot of pro-carry uh, laws in place. We all also have <clears throat> We also have a lot of heavy use of guns. There's a very heavy emphasis due to natural predation that is so abundant in Alaska. Things like bears, wolves, um, things like bears and wolves put a large emphasis on the need for self-protection. And so <clears throat> there's a lot of guns out there. Guns are a very prevalent thing here in Alaska. And I found that in our culture, because guns are so intertwined and mingled into our culture, that we do have a different perspective on guns. And oftentimes it is obviously very pro-gun and uh, that's because we really need them. Like I was saying today, I'm going to be giving you guys some feedback and what I think overall on all these different shootings and ultimately kind of getting you guys or kind of talking about why I start or why I carry every day. Why I carry every day. Now there are many different reasons as I've explained in my different everyday carry videos and why I'm a sheepdog and why I believe in having not just guns but gear to make me more equipped but specifically having guns to stop violent situations is very important because of <laughs> personal philosophies of being a sheepdog and preparedness and just being prepared for your situations. Being able to look out for others is very important for me. And so why I end up carrying guns so much and why I open carry is one, I legally can't conceal carry, unfortunately, but I can legally open carry. And so I want to have a gun on me. And I actually used to open carry a little bit more, a few, quite a few years back, but I actually stopped because I didn't really want to lug a gun around every single day. And honestly, there wasn't a whole lot of reason to. For me, I've always carried guns for, well, not always, but I've always carried handguns and smaller guns such as this Glock 19 for self-protection and never just, you know, for like predation of animals. I mean, it's certainly one thing it will help step in, not so much a nine mil, but a 45 definitely does help step in and stop predation or predators from attacking you. But also, and even more importantly, it helps you stop uh, violent situations that could be encountered. And so earlier this year, actually really starting out this year, 2017, there was a large influx just in general of violent situations situations, shootings happening very frequently, not just in other countries, but in the U.S., and it's been a continuing trend, and I'm not going to play sociologist here or psychologist and explain why people are doing this. There are many different reasons um, out there, and many of them are very good. I'm not going to try and say this is the exact reason, but for whatever reason, there's many different violent situations kicking off, and overall, overall, it wasn't just those uh, situations that happened but even here in Fairbanks Alaska I know a pretty small place there were actually several incidents where guns were used to either hurt police officers to hold people hostage to do really crazy things and so it wasn't just like seeing people down the lower 48 doing crazy things like the Las Vegas shooting that didn't necessarily prompt me because once again Alaska is pretty isolated from the lower 48 so when we see things happening down there it's like it raises a certain level of awareness on my radar, but hurricanes don't really have that much of an effect on me. I'm not going to go get more prepared because I'm so far away. I'm so isolated from those events that it's not really that applicable. But when there were multiple shootings at different places here in Fairbanks, it really prompted me. There was also a bit of like a shootout and running from the police on one of our highways. And so there was a lot of different craziness happening this last summer and this 
you know, 2016 kind of fall winter time there was a lot of craziness that happened in that time and it really prompted me to begin looking at my handguns again saying that you know things are getting a little bit more crazy around here and it makes a lot more sense weighing the risks and weighing the benefits and the costs of this that it ultimately does make a lot more sense to once again start reholstering these handguns and since then I've obviously got back into training myself with these guns I run a lot of rounds this one's already had since I got it it's already had like over 400 rounds through it so I am practicing a lot with these guns I take them out to the range I don't just shoot a, like a couple magazines oftentimes when I go to the range I'll fire over 100 rounds and really hone down do drills and stuff like that but ultimately like I was saying due to a lot of local things happening uh, in Anchorage and Fairbanks Alaska I was prompted to once again relook at the handguns because there was a lot of craziness happening and I wanted to make sure that uh, above just being able to protect other people that, that I could protect not just myself but those around me and the people that I love the most and so being willing and being able to defend them was a really large deciding factor of reholstering these guns primarily the Glock 21 because I kind of recently got the 19 but uh, the 21 I carried all throughout the summer all throughout the spring all throughout uh, last fall and winter time of 2016 uh, and that was the one I was primarily carrying for these types of situations and so it really doesn't matter and I'm not going to get into like what gun you should get uh, because I'm very very biased to Glocks that's pretty much the only types of handguns I run are Glocks so I'm not going to get into that and I'm not going to try and sell you guys on Glock but uh, I'm just explaining why I carry. Now it is also true that uh, I carry for wilderness defense obviously being in the woods being a bushcrafter you guys know or hopefully you guys know that in the summer especially in the winter sometimes but in the summer especially I'm very much a bushcrafter I'm in the woods encounters close encounters we're not just talking you know like 15 yards we're talking two yards with things like bull moose I've never actually got that close to wolves because wolves are very hard to get close to uh, and same with bears most predators are actually very hard to get very close to but you know you can hear them you you know they're around you you can see their tracks and so it's nice to have guns that you know can help defend you from them that was a certain level of playing into this fact or that was a certain factor playing into the want to carry but primarily it was that and as far as gun control goes as I've probably already made it quite clear I'm obviously anti-gun control of any type backing the NRA and well, I'm gonna get into the NRA here in a little bit but um, ultimately I'm very pro-gun and really I think as a country with all these types of shootings we do need to start to assess the risk of the amount of shootings that are happening and why we need to start moving toward arming people or just being an armed and practiced people now, I'm not saying everyone needs to go out and get a handgun and not everyone needs to be flamboyantly carrying their AR-15 down the street this isn't carrying guns for self-defense has never really been especially for me even though it's open carry it's never been about asserting dominance and about showing that I'm the best person or that I'm ready to defend you and you should love me because I'm going to defend you in a situation that's never what it's been about and so please don't try and you know go buy an AR strap it on you and carry it everywhere you go because you want to make a point to some would-be terrorist that you're going to defend yourself against them but do I would recommend a push towards more people really getting into firearms really training with them and getting acquainted with them this is another reason why I've been kind of prompted here of late to do more reviews of guns especially handguns because I want to start providing my own takes on these uh, options for self-defense and for carry and so I want to start putting out videos like that so you guys can make better choices when it does come time hopefully you guys supporting guns would buy a firearm for your own protection and as we've consistently seen especially with the uh, <clears throat> last shooting at the church in Texas that it really does prove positive to have a knowledgeable person with a firearm can cause a lot of great it can really help stop the situation and oftentimes a lot of people uh, come out and roll out and say that the violence just needs to stop and need to ban all guns because that would help alleviate these situations and in most times it really wouldn't because there are many different situations where guns haven't been used 
used to. I don't want to get too regurgitation here of just telling you guys what you already know. But ultimately, really, we need to sit down as an American people and remember that we were founded for the three primary things of the three primary rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness or property. And when you begin to see a large influx of people wanting to take our three primary American U.S. constitutional rights away, that it's really important that we as a citizenry need to step up and begin to assume the role of protecting other people's rights because these are rights that are uninfringable uninfringible. These are things that people are not allowed to come up on and start infringing on you without serious repercussion. And I think here in America, we've become such a reactionary culture that we've forgotten the fact that these are the three rights that each and every U.S. citizen has. These are the things that they have with them being a U.S. citizen. And so when you see people infringing upon it, it's time that we take actions as smart and responsible U.S. citizens to start protecting our own rights. Our, those are our rights each and every one of us has. And those are the rights that everyone around us has. And we need to make sure that we assert that and that people know that without a doubt. And I think one of the primary ways at this point, it's regressed so far that one of the primary ways that we, need, we can assert that or make sure that people, especially outsiders, realize our rights is to use and bear arms. And I'm not saying that we need to get crazy and that like, I said we need to just be carrying our AR-15s around on our shoulders ready to just stop everyone. It's not, it doesn't need to be a flamboyant show, but it needs to be more present and we need to stop the whole <clears throat> running around trying to ban guns and so, help, hoping that that will solve the situation because at this point, in all honesty, it doesn't solve the situation. And if you look at it in places, I like to look at Alaska personally because, once again, Alaska is such a gun-rich environment. There's so many guns here. There's so many people who carry guns. But yet you don't see a lot of violence, especially with guns, committed here in Alaska. And the reason why is because when everyone's armed, the, the person who wants to cause trouble who wants to attack has to think twice before they actually do it because the probability of them getting attacked back is much higher here in Alaska than it is in a place like California or New York and so you run into a lot more trouble in those types of places in those environments because they lack that protection. Anyways, guys, hopefully you've kind of enjoyed this look at it or look at my personal stance for firearms, why I started carrying because I actually originally started carrying and then kind of stopped carrying for a period of time, like for around two or three years, I actually stopped carrying and now I'm back to it. And I wanted to really give a reason of why I've kind of picked it back up. I know many of you guys don't really know that, but personally, as far as an everyday carry goes, I you know stopped, but I really wanted to pick it back up because I feel that we really need to as an American people be more prepared. We need to be more responsible and we need to really assert our rights and show that we're not going to be taken over. And one of the greatest things you can actually do, not to say once again that you should go out looking for trouble, but as a responsible, trained, armed citizen, one of the best things you can do is be in one of these situations, use your firearm to stop the situation because it's at that point that the media can't get a hold of the uh, the the mass attack or the shooting and use it for their free will because they have to show the facts they have to show the proof that it is in fact that guns do stop that violent threat whether that violent threat is a vehicle a knife attacker of armed attacker of some gun. guns stop those types of people so anyways guys i don't want to drag this video out too much hopefully you've enjoyed this roll in shooting footage i try and keep these videos these philosophy videos a little bit interesting and i just wanted to show you guys overall an Alaskan kind of theory or kind of explain what Alaskans look at it because guns are a lot more prevalent here and we definitely have a different perspective on gun control than a lot of other states. Anyways guys, I don't speak for all Alaskans, but God bless and I'm out.